I would like to kind of like jump into the general th theme of best practices, which is kind of highlighting each of these artists kind of three best practices that we see for them. So the first one for JD is contracts. Yo, yeah. So we're going to we're going to talk about this a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the frame that I was stretching Mm -hmm. So this is oh, what. Oh, this was it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, okay. I, I mounted it on top of my cargo van and drove it to Fort Worth. And so um, in downtown, it's downtown. Uh, there, the Tarrant County College has a campus in the old International Radio Shack headquarters. Uh, so when Radio Shack was, you know, a giant, you know, retailer, they had this campus uh, that. Uh, had all this art in it and they had collected all these sculptures and, and, and photographs and paintings and when uh, TCC bought it they just inherited all this art and this happened several years ago I can't mm -hmm. know the number exactly uh, but when I was doing the Panther Island one of the uh, art um, directors or, or administrators happened to run into me and said that, hey, we want to do this thing next year uh, for Martin Luther King Day. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a nice way for us to start this art collection thing back up again. And uh, so under the guise of we want you to create this art for a specific theme, Martin Luther King Day, mm -hmm. um, which I did there. So the one on the uh, left is like a shot of me painting like on their courtyard, just mm -hmm. behind this glass mm -hmm. on the right. And then it was displayed in like this corridor. Mm -hmm. um, I was there for about three days painting it, had people talking like you would do a mural. Of course, this is not affixed to the building, which is kind of where specificity and clarity and communication really started to like the importance of it really started to rear its head mm -hmm. <clears throat> because what i was having a conversation with with the administrator was not what the dean of the school was under the impression of he wanted um the art made and the fee that they paid me to paint for this mm -hmm. Uh, is what he kind of figured, oh, this is now ours, despite what the paper said and what the, you know, the, what they did have for a contract. Um, so, yeah, long story short, I went to go ask about if they wanted to purchase it. And mm -hmm. when I wasn't, you know, hearing those answers, I went to go get it. And when I did that, they stopped me and said, you know, if you remove this, we'll have to arrest you because you're on their property and it's under there, this and that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Andrea had to step in and uh, kind of make things right. And it was, yeah, a, a really, they, they hid the painting from me and a six by 10 is a hard thing to hide. It was in this place, part of the building we couldn't, I couldn't get it from. So uh, that was what alerted the campus police and uh yeah it was it was an ordeal so so andrea perez one of our board members who is a lawyer mm -hmm. and she offers pro bono services to a lot of our artists um she was able to help you kind of like represent yeah. your case yeah because had it been just up to me you know i'm just this local artist mm -hmm. that uh yeah just i guess i don't know what else um you know, in their mind, kind of justified, yeah, tr treating me in my art this way. Um, yeah, they were... And I'm purposely hiding it. They, they definitely... So I had a, a person who was very much so on my side and advocating mm -hmm. for me, who worked, uh, who was one of the uh, employees and a part of the faculty. And she uh, very... Um, innocently on her part was like yeah let's go let's figure this out let's go find it and she was like uh something's not right here and we found it in a closet mm -hmm. uh, with other artwork by the way it was I was I, mine wasn't the only one in there and uh yeah we were able to track it down and um figure out that the dean was kind of the one behind like really thinking that like, mm -hmm. like what are we doing wasting our time negotiating anything mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, but luck, luckily, again, yeah, Andrea was able to introduce me to, because she wasn't the first lawyer that I spoke with. I spoke okay. to another lawyer, mm -hmm. and she was a little uh, less um, like empathetic. It was definitely like something that was my fault because I didn't uh, have this already you know, laid out, predetermined, mm -hmm. no, no assumptions, no anything like that. Uh, but luckily, yeah, Andrea was much more patient and, you know, was able to be like, yeah, this isn't right. We're going to make the, We're going to help you make this right. And yeah. Had it not been for the CU, I wouldn't have made it to Andrea because I worked my way to her through mm -hmm. the uh, law. It was like a, a lawyer. It was on Zoom. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, uh, gosh. Yeah. So we had like a pro bono lawyer day where you could sign up for mm -hmm. a consultation. Yeah, that's what it yeah. was. And I spoke with a gentleman and. He directed me to Andrea. So. Yeah, and mm -hmm. Andrea's got such a big heart for this kind of work too. So right, it's great right. that you were able to link up. Mm -hmm. So going forward, how have you kind of structured your contract since this? Well, well, so I have noticed that in some instances, it's necessary to have something very almost like condescendingly like meticulous mm -hmm. like <clears throat> why would you think I would have to um, lay this out but mm -hmm. there are sort of like three tiers that I've landed in because when I'm doing business with just one other person um, I figure a one page paragraph very mm -hmm. straightforward things are in bold things are uh, you know underlined and there is you know, a place for both people to understand that this is the mm -hmm. agreement. Setting expectations. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and to, if I have to maybe provide something for a larger business that doesn't have a legal staff or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, the second tier would be something that I might find on like uh, the Rocket Lawyer or one of those like mm -hmm. websites that I can, can, I can uh, almost like customize what it is I need to make sure is there. And luckily I've done <clears throat> larger city contracts mm -hmm. that include the big legal jargon and the 20 pages of this and that. And I've only had to use that once, um, like not use it, but mm -hmm. uh, implement it. So. Mm -hmm. So that's the third level. Mm -hmm. It's the 20 pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. The one with the indemnification word on it and, and yeah, <laughs> all that one, yeah. Well, I'm proud of you for having those all lined up and like making sure that like you're, as you said before, not souring relationships, but like making sure there's clear lines of communication and expectations. For sure, yeah, yeah, what's up? Yeah. Did you get your painting back? <clears throat> I did get it back. <laughs> I was like, what? I, I did get it back. The end of the story. I, it didn't take long after Andrea stepped in for me to then be like, okay, it's yeah. his. Yeah. Big, scary, pretty yeah. art lawyer. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the second best practice I would like to hit on is your clerical abilities, which we kind of touched on before. Mm -hmm. But I've got this lovely little yeah. image you sent me of your spreadsheets. So, this is something that I've replicated. I have a space in my to, uh, my tattoo space, my studio that I do that in, it is like a drawer and like filing system. Mm -hmm. So I kind of talked about how um, I've been able to kind of compartmentalize all of my consumables. So there's two columns at the top portion called liners and shaders. Mm -hmm. Those are like categories for the needles that I'll use. And those are I mean, everything is important, but you know, you can't tattoo without the needles no. and the right sizes. So there are codes for what size is what. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'll just go through, you know, what I have either week to week or month to month, depending on what my tattoo schedule is looking like and just determine what I need to order. Um, Cause yeah, everything is online based. There's really not a good store. There's a few that have some mm -hmm. tattoo. In Dallas? Uh, there's one in Dallas and one in Fort Worth. Um, the one in Dallas is a little better. The tattoo world is small. Uh, I'd prefer not to go to this place. It's a whole other thing. Uh, but um, yeah, they. Uh, I, so I have to make sure that I'm prepared at least several days in advance yeah. to have things. And so from the priority, from that second paragraph um, is 
uh, just an example of what I would need and what I go through the most. So, yeah, uh, what I have is like paper towels, gloves. Uh, gloves, alcohol, water, stencil paper, stencil gel. There's a, probably about three times as many things that go into one tattoo. Uh, but this is what you kind of burn through the quickest. Mm -hmm. And um, if I were to ever like do a convention or travel or, you know, I've um, tattooed family out of state. These are the things that I can just quickly look at and know that I have. Grab and your tattoo go bag. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I guess, the type of person that if I don't have it organized, it's going to get forgotten or, you know, um, so this is a good example of how I am trying to translate mm -hmm. my practice into knowing like what colors I have on hand or mm -hmm. um, when I'm doing larger murals, like what's in my van, like the, um, you know, like the bigger airless sprayers and mm -hmm. all those components. So different things like that is what, the, and this is some uh, uh, element that I've had to practice the entire, entirety of my tattoo career. Mm -hmm. So even as an apprentice, you're doing this for other people as well, so. So uh, it's kind of a good way to start setting you up as mm -hmm. a professional artist. Yeah, 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 because yeah. uh, organization is definitely key. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just so visual that, yeah, just by looking at what I have behind the, you know, p compartment for mm -hmm. these tools is uh, enough for me to be like, okay, I, I'm low on this, I can get this, yeah. So you kind of briefly mentioned before that you like compartmentalize a lot of your life. Mm -hmm. Like you have to like, you are working in five plus mediums sure. that I know of. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so what are also other tools that you're help using to help like compartmentalize and yeah. schedule yourself? Um, so for me, like Google Calendar has just been the easiest thing to put all of the things that I need to like remember to commit myself to. Mm -hmm. And luckily they have um, a feature where you can uh, select colors for whatever you're inputting. And so mm -hmm. I've kind of made in my own mind like what color means what thing, like if I need to go meet somebody, mm -hmm. that's light blue and it's in there. And if I have a tattoo appointment, that's purple. Um, if I have a consultation, that's yellow. If I um, have uh, something like if I if I have like a non like an important non movable non negotiable thing, then that's red. Yeah. Of course. So, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, though Google Calendar and uh, the website host that I use is Squarespace, mm -hmm. which is really nice because they also have like a widget that I can use on my iPhone to look at like analytics or mm -hmm. look at um, uh, the different uh, sort of back, like the back behind the scene yeah, like things. The, yeah, all those analytics are great mm -hmm. and like the structure. Yeah, yeah, and they uh, have, they're able to integrate um, like the uh, like form submissions. So a contact uh -huh. is very like streamlined through through there. So I, I have, been happy with them you know i'm pretty sure that was my first one to use so i don't even want to <laughs> don't even change yeah 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 because yeah, yeah, it's, it's really good mm -hmm. we're not sponsored by squarespace <laughs> yeah. but a lot of us use squarespace for sure um it, it, it is a very simple kind of intuitive design which is great right. um and i also use the mobile app and it makes yeah. life so much easier it really does and yeah. like i'm so thankful that we're like in this time where like we have such busy lives where we're like all over the place but we still have like all of our information on our phone yeah to yeah run to our businesses be able to yeah have everything in one space um i've started using google voice also which is like another number oh um yeah it's like i have a, like a, a business phone Mm -hmm. number that I can use to call and text so it integrates into the calendar as oh, well so nice. the Google Apps are really nice and then yeah. you know I don't think that they communicate but the Squarespace mm -hmm. combo with Google really is what I recommend yeah yeah solid oh yeah solid so 
my my favorite one is this next one. Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So since I've known you, you've added quite a few new skills to your long list. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which includes 3D rendering. Oh yeah, that uh, <laughs> that's the most fun I've had recently in exploring something new because it's. It's technology, but it's still like art, like fine art. It's, it's, there's a learning curve, but there is still, I've been able to work with clay mm -hmm. uh, before. And uh, this is a program called Nomad that I use on my mm -hmm. iPad. Yeah, it's the organic uh, um, software, like the software I use when I wanna do organic 3D rendering. Mm -hmm. It uh, works well with another app I use called Metascan. Uh, so, yeah, Taylor is definitely uh, Cleveland. A, you know, yeah, a big help in like, helping me discover all these things. Sweet. Um, so yeah, I, I scanned my reference and been able to put it in this program, clean it up, mm -hmm. and take it though beyond the program mm -hmm. and the um, you know into the real world, which. Uh, this was just intended to be a, a vase, but a study is kind of really where I look at a lot of things. So, yeah, this was a, a fun project that uh, I'm anxious to, to get back into exploring yeah. just, you know, what I can do beyond in, in the organic uh, half of rendering, what it can be, you know, beyond uh, a non-functional or I guess th this, is this is functional. This is functional. This is a piece of functional. I guess art. I, my expectations for what it, it could do in a space and for a person is so high that. Mm -hmm. Like, is it like a and something that's integral? Not, like, is it a toothbrush? Yeah, something that's not static. You know, yeah. something that's yeah, but it is still like it has this form and, mm -hmm. and of course function being the equal. Uh, and I also like to touch that this is a three D printed vase. Mm -hmm. JD spent several months just printing out these vases and then sanding them meticulously, yeah. <laughs> spray painting them. And then after all of this, he sewed the most beautiful little drawstring bags for them oh, and yeah. stamped them and the presentation was just <laughs> It was, yeah, it was just a, a fun, like, you know, just doing it for the, for the passion. Yeah, know, but like the it. craftsmanship and this whole process, like, mm. yes, it's a 3D printed vase. It's something mm. that's, generated by a computer, but like there's still so much of your hand behind it. I, I guess, yeah, unconsciously, that is like what is, what's happening with mm -hmm. all these levels beyond the software and the printer is, you know, I still want to make sure that it feels. Like you. Non-manufactured, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then we'll go on to your manufactured parts. Sure, yeah, so <laughs> that is the other side of things, I guess where I, uh, uh, put function is into things like this. So in the top left, that is the view from me looking down at my gauge cluster on my motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And the image to the bottom left is the result of like my, of the altered vision. It's a picture of my girlfriend in this, uh, <laughs> in this like, <laughs> So I made a frame and the two pictures to the right are how it kind of works. So I, I printed this thing, I, I measured it, I scanned my dash with Metascan. So I had this like reverse engineered uh, method of creating this form. Like I had it in my head mm -hmm. and I was able to put things right where I wanted it to. And so it kind of protrudes past and up mm -hmm. my gauge cluster and then um, I can thread in a, um, a top uh, to kind of, you know, keep it water, uh, weatherproof. <laughs> yeah. That is the uh, <laughs> I, 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 I did that because I have this thought of, okay, this is cool for me, um, but would it, wouldn't it be cool if I could produce a product that uh, this company could then mm -hmm. license or buy? Because yeah, I wanted to actually have um, also uh, like a compass because I'm directionally mm -hmm. challenged. I have a very hard time with if I'm going north or west or so to have this like accessory, mm -hmm. you know, that you could, you know, easily mount, mount into. Yeah. yeah and, and it'd be modular. You can have a series of these things going mm -hmm. all the way around. And that's just, you know, what fits 
what I have, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was uh, fun. And since then, this was the first thing, and since then I've probably done... Like, oh yeah, no, spray can. So this is, uh, so this is still the, so I use Fusion 360. Uh, that's a program that renders in 3D, but it's more like, it's non-organic, I could mm -hmm. say. It's very sharp, very angular, very uh, a poly, mm -hmm. and um, that works for uh, applications that I've definitely used. It's probably my sixth mm -hmm. iteration of a stencil cap, mm -hmm. but to do, um, yeah, tight work, I have uh, just a little hole mm -hmm. um, in there. Uh, that catches uh, the the the, like the over the over yeah. drips, and then it just collects in this reservoir, and it worked. I used it on a mural, the last mural, the big mural that I did. Uh, so uh, I've definitely I've seen how this could you know result. I'm still like learning and playing, and mm -hmm. but this is definitely something I feel like. But it's made it to your CV, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for yeah. sure. It, uh, yeah. yeah, transferable it's, skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. maybe someday in the future we'll find like some cool like manufactured part or like a chair or something designed by you. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not turning it down any facet of how what this can be made into. Mm -hmm. I definitely have my interest like zeroed in mm -hmm. in a in an area but um yeah this is something i'm pretty proud of because it's i can just once one kind of gets clogged and it's kind of brittle or something i can just make another one print a new one mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and then i would like to end on this story please okay this is uh uh i guess two months ago now at this point um uh, yeah, me and my girlfriend have a tradition of uh, bringing in the new year in a like a new place. So we like to go camping. And uh, this year we went to Big Bend and uh, we did this on, on my motorcycle. So her and I, uh, and it's, it's definitely not like a touring Harley or anything. It's, it's, a in, it's in between like a sport bike, but it does Is have... Is it the Triumph? It's the Triumph, Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I um, bought this bike uh, with these metal brackets attached to them. So the previous owner had a mounting rack system and he took off part of it, but left this like brace in there. Mm -hmm. And I, in the Fusion 360, kind of replicated what it could have been and looked like and printed this like, I basically kind of uh, mimicked what sheet metal bending is. Yeah. And um, made this really thick uh, sort of U-shaped thing that would fit on those metal brackets. Mm -hmm. And 100% like plastic, it was probably like 70% dense. Gosh. It held, I think, uh, I think that's like 30 pounds. 30 or so pounds of like our tent, our, our uh, sleeping bags, our, our clothes, um, just right on, on there. And it, uh, it lasted the whole way. We went, if you're unfamiliar, it's eight hours towards uh, the Rio Grande uh, border and mm -hmm. uh, it, it made it back and it was fine. It, we, we still have all our stuff, so. Andrew still together which is the greatest part yeah after a long yeah motorcycle she's, ride. Uh, she's a, well see and that's the thing she's pretty great because she <laughs> loves camping she's definitely uh the the muse and the the inspiration behind a lot of the the stuff i do so she all the said, shenanigans i want to go camping and you clearly like motorcycling i it's i daily my motorcycle from fort worth to here mm -hmm. uh almost every week and uh, she was like i mean let's she got into people who do this like on vlogs and mm -hmm. you know, has found lady moto campers and she's like, okay, I can do this, you know, so let's do it. And we, yeah, we, yeah. we just had yeah. an adventure. But like, so like as someone who used to ride, like Big Bend is kind of a, a harder place for a bike. There's like lots of like rocks. Mm -hmm. and, like, yeah, we definitely went off roading a few times. Uh, <laughs> we, we stayed rubber side down the whole <laughs> way, thankfully. Uh, but yeah, we, we've been infected by the desert for sure. Um, but yeah, this wouldn't have been possible had I not 
had that practical like um, framework of mm -hmm. how printing and, and this design could have worked because that was a that doesn't get more real world application yeah. than loading like you know half your uh, more than half of your gear on this thing that you on got. a piece of plastic mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah that you've designed mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah well thank you so much for sharing what you've been up to for like <laughs> the past while oh, and giving yeah. us more of an in depth look on how you came to be hey well it's been thank my you, pleasure Katie. thank you very much I appreciate it. Did you ride your bike today? Oh yeah, it's healthy. Uh, all these flowers are for you, but oh, um, okay. I can get you flowers some other time. I, I, I will be back. Yeah, yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.